Hey everybody, this is Rhett. Welcome to Statistics. In this video, we'll learn about the logic of confidence intervals. A confidence interval for an unknown parameter is an interval of numbers based on a point estimate, together with a confidence level specifying the probability that the interval contains the parameter. In this video, I'll discuss the logic of confidence intervals using an example. Jelly beans. Let's say that you want to answer the question, how many jelly beans are in a typical 14 and a half ounce jar? To answer this question, we want to estimate mu, the population mean number of jelly beans in a 14.5 ounce jar. Let's consider a couple of strategies. Strategy one, one jar. You count the number of jelly beans in one 14.5 ounce jar. The number of jelly beans in that particular jar happens to be 330. Do you think that this is the exact value of mu, the mean for all jars? Not likely. A different jar would likely result in a different count, since there is variety among the jars. Let's consider a second strategy one sample of 25 jars. In this case, you gather a sample of 25 jars and find the average number of jelly beans per jar for the sample of 25 jars is 324. Do you think that this is the exact value of mu, the mean for all jars? Again, not likely. A different sample of 25 jars would likely result in a different sample mean since there's variety among the jars and therefore among the samples of jars. Let's consider a third strategy in which we take 100 samples. We already have one sample of 25. Let's gather 99 additional samples of 25 jars per sample. Then average the number of jelly beans per jar for each sample of 25 jars. And then we average the 100 sample means. So which strategy is the best? The count from one jar of jelly beans, the mean for 25 jars, or the average mean from 100 samples of 25 jars. The third option would give the best estimate. But keep in mind, we need the counts from 2,500 jars for this strategy. In that case, we might as well get a count from every single jar. We need to consider the cost and benefits of each strategy. The cost might include time, it takes a lot of time to count jelly beans, money, those jars of jelly beans certainly cost money, and labor, it's a lot of effort to count all those jelly beans. But what are the benefits? For each strategy, we should consider the precision, accuracy, and reliability of our estimates. As far as cost, the first strategy seems best. It's the most economical. We only need one jar of jelly beans. It requires the least amount of time, money, and labor. As far as benefits, counting the jelly beans in every single jar would give us the precise value of mu, not an estimate, but the actual value of mu. Let's see if we can find a balance. Consider the sampling distribution of the sample mean, x bar. Assume for now that the population distribution is normal. What does the sampling distribution of x bar look like? If the population distribution is normal, then the sampling distribution will also be normal. The sampling distribution has the same mean as the population distribution. The sampling standard deviation, however, is less than the population standard deviation. The sampling standard deviation, also called the standard error of the mean, is a fraction of the population standard deviation. The standard error of the mean is sigma over the square root of n, where n is your sample size. Let's say that for 14 and a half ounce jars of jelly beans, the true population mean, mu, is 325. 
Furthermore, let's say that the true population standard deviation, sigma, is 15. Now, of course, if the values of the parameters were known, then there would be no need to estimate these parameters. But bear with me. Given the population mean of 325 and population standard deviation of 15, the sampling distribution of the sample mean will be normal, centered at 325, with standard error of 15 over the square root of 25. In other words, X bar will be normally distributed with mean 325 and standard error of 3. The center is 325, one standard deviation in either direction gives 322 and 328. Two standard deviations in either direction brings us to 319 and 331. And three standard deviations in either direction will take us to 316 and 334. Let's go back to strategy three for estimating mu. We have the sample means from 100 samples of 25 jars. Of the 100 sample means, how many do you expect to be between 319 and 331 jelly beans per jar? According to the empirical rule, 95% of the sample means should be within two standard errors of the mean. In this case, 95% of the sample means should be between 319 and 331. That's within six of the population mean of 325 jelly beans. What might those 100 sample means look like? Each sample of 25 jars will result in a different sample mean, but we expect 68% of those to be within one standard deviation of the population mean, 95% to be within two standard errors of the mean, and 99.7% to be within three standard errors of the mean. What if we take each of the 100 sample means and construct an interval by adding and subtracting two standard errors? For example, the first sample of 25 results in a mean of 324. If we add and subtract two standard errors, we get an interval of 318 to 330. A second sample may result in a mean of 320. When we add and subtract two standard errors, we end up with an interval of 314 to 326. Using this strategy, we could construct 100 intervals, one around each of our 100 sample means. How many of the 100 intervals would contain the true population mean? Consider that 95% of the sample means will be within two standard errors of the population mean. In other words, 95% of the intervals will be constructed around estimates between 319 and 331. Since those 95 estimates are within six units, two standard errors of the mean, 95% of the intervals will contain the true mean. Therefore, we can be 95% confident that any one of them contains the true mean. If we can be 95% confident that any one of them contains the true mean, then we don't need to take 100 samples of 25. Rather, Take just one sample of 25. Use the value of the sample mean as a point estimate of mu. Construct an interval around the point estimate. For 95% confidence, plus or minus two standard errors. For 99.7% confidence, you could plus or minus three standard errors. For other confidence levels, the multiple of standard errors is a corresponding critical value. For more on critical values, watch the video on critical values. This is the logic of confidence intervals. Start with a point estimate of the parameter, such as a value of x bar to estimate mu. 
select an appropriate level of confidence such as 90 percent, 95 percent, or 99 percent. The confidence level determines a multiple of the standard error. The product of that multiple and the standard error is called the margin of error. Construct the interval by subtracting, then adding the margin of error. For example, x bar plus or minus z times the quotient of sigma and the square root of n. These are the building blocks of every confidence interval, a point estimate and a margin of error. The point estimate is a value of a statistic. The margin of error is the product of standard error and a multiple called the critical value determined by the confidence level. For example, x bar plus or minus e. x bar is a point estimate and e is the margin of error. The margin of error E is the product of a critical value and standard error. Let's reconsider strategy two. One sample of 25 jars. The value of the sample mean based on 25 jars of jelly beans is 324. So our point estimate of mu is x bar, 324. For 95% confidence, we need two standard errors. One standard error is sigma over square root of n, in this case 15 over the square root of 25. Since the square root of 25 is 5, we divide 15 by 5, which gives 3. Thus, our margin of error is 2 times 3, or 6. A 95% confidence interval is 324 plus or minus 6. This is our point estimate plus or minus our margin of error. The actual interval is from 318 to 330. And so we are 95 percent confident that the population mean number of jelly beans per jar is between 318 and 330. And there you have it, the logic of confidence intervals. All confidence intervals consist of a point estimate plus or minus margin of error. The margin of error is a multiple of the standard error. The multiple is determined by a confidence level. Thanks for watching and have a great day. Until next time, stay real and be rational.